it has been a while since I worked on my rack. And as you can see, my studio is changed a lot. A lot of colored lights now and my rack is now in this corner. But wait, there's something missing. That's better. So this will probably be a very long video. So take some coffee and some chips and uh, enjoy watching. I'm gonna focus on my home lab in my rack. But first of all, a little update about the Quantum 3D Alchemy system. Because I got a big package in with the motherboard. But first, let's change the light. I mean, this better if I show stuff. Then you can actually see what I'm doing. So what got in is uh, two extra uh, Quantum 3D power supplies. But these are not mine. But they will be uh, recapped and repaired and checked by Dave. And one of them I already opened and the caps seemed alright by those units. Only there's uh, like a spool loose on the PCB. So it needs to be checked up. And also I got some spare fans to uh, install in them. So Dave will uh, get four more power supplies because my first power supply is already up and running with new uh, capacitors. I still need to get it back and then it will be going in this chassis and I will build it up and then uh, the four other power supplies go in repair. So he also sent uh, four one gigabyte SD RAM sticks for my second chassis of tech, uh, one gigabyte PC 130D registered. So four gigabyte SD RAM, that's quite nice. And I got two motherboards, but they both have problems. Uh, one is like unstable, not really working. So I need to see what's wrong with it. Probably I gonna just re uh, recap them to be sure. I really love this uh, motherboard. In this Alchemy system is the slot one variant and this is a socket 370 variant i prefer of course slot one because it's a better cpu uh, type but the difference with the slot one system is this one has socket 370 uh, and four memory banks sd ram and the slot one has eight memory banks but with four times one gigabyte four banks is enough but for the rest it's the same layout with scusi and isa slot hp pro PCI 64, uh, sound, uh, LAN, everything you need. This motherboard has dual 933 CPUs. Here's the other motherboard and there's something interesting on it. Maybe you already see it. It's the CPUs. These are uh, Intel Pentium 3 1400s with 512 kilobytes of cache. And there's a problem because the motherboard by the previous owner was working and giving like unknown CPUs. Then he flashed the BIOS and that went wrong. So this motherboard has a broken BIOS. But luckily we have the other motherboard with probably a working BIOS. So I need to swap out and see if I can get it working. But to use the 1400 CPUs on this motherboard, there's a little converter under it and I never seen them before so let's see how that looks and it makes the CPU a little bit taller and the 1400 is already a little bit taller from itself but that is a little bit more difficult with mounting coolers on it and maybe you can see it it's like a little PCB which is sandwiched under the CPU a little thin converter plate in between. But let's take the CPU back before I damage it. Because I really like to see if I can get it up and running with 1400 CPUs. Enough about the Quantum 3D systems. Let's focus on the rack. The Sun server rack is now standing on this wooden plate to protect the floor because the floor is very fragile. Fra 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 Fragile, yeah, that's the word. On this wooden plate, I can still move it around on the wheels. So if I need to do a lot of maintenance in the back, I can move it forward. If we open the door. In the bottom, we have my APC 3000 UPS to you and already saved my butt a few times. 
And here we have a drawer to you. In this drawer I have some patch cables, some couplers, some glass couplers because I bought a whole bag of it because they are really cheap. And I'm probably gonna run my uh, fiber optic cable a little bit different because this is not the best situation. And here a big bag of uh, keystones to uh, make my own cable runs and some other little stuff. Here we have an Apple X-Surf and the VGA adapter arrived so we can test it out. Here we have a Sun X2100 uh, that is working. Here we have my Super Micro backup server. Here we have my file server with 48 terabytes of hard drive storage and 4 SSDs. A Sunfire V210 and I didn't test it yet and here we have two Sunfire V100 and I really love those machines and I have the rack kit for them so in this video I will put them uh, on the rack kit and in a later video I just gonna explore them one of them is already uh, up and running in the terms of that I tried it out, installed an OS on it and just to see how the system works but I also will do that in a video. So here's some uh, hard drives that don't need to be here, they came out of my workstation. And on top of the free 100 we have the documentation and a spare CD-ROM player and some cables. Here we have another drawer, this one is 3U and in this shelf we have fiber optic network cables a uh, null modem, screws in here, a mouse, some piping to route my fiber optics and some other little things. Here we have some open space. First I was thinking let's put a monitor here, but I think two quantum 3D systems in here is maybe much better. Here we have my 48 uh, port netgear switch and I'm probably gonna add some more switches in this video because I found two in a thrift store. And here on top we have a keystone patch panel. So these are the original rails from the Sunfire V100 and they are pretty simple. Just you can extend them a little bit and then screw in from side to side. So let's remove the two V100s and put the rails in the rack and then uh, install them. I think it's cool to just install them just below this uh, drawer. So let's first uh, get the servers out because they are now just stacked on my main server. And that's not the best way if you need to do maintenance. So I went to the hardware store and I bought a lot of screws for in the rack. So, oh wait, this is not the right size. I probably have another box with the correct screws. Yes, this is the correct box with a lot of screws. I'm a bit lazy, so I'm gonna use some power tools. I put an extra shelf behind this drawer and that is hitting now the rails. So let's uh, make some room here and get rid of this mess here. It's now time to test fit the V100 because I'm not sure uh, what size this rail needs to be from this rail because it has some movement like this. So let's see what happens if I put in a surfer. And here on the side you have nice plastic uh, sliding uh, rails. Mm, that fits. And here we have the lock screws, one on each side. Let's loosen up the screws here. I think they need to be a little bit wider. Yes, 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 this is it. Now I can screw uh, down the thumb screws by hand. Okay, they need to go on the wider setting. So let's put the second machine in. 
Really nice. Love it. I have this RGB light strip in my surf rack from the dollar store, but on this side it keeps coming loose and I already put better sticky tape here, but it's not enough. So let's put some more sticky tape behind it because I hate it that it keeps coming loose. It's really, really annoying. And this roll is more expensive than the lights, so yeah. I cut some items here for in the rack. First of all, a lot of big cables. And the cables are for this unit. And this is an HP uh, KVM switch. And this is a unit from uh, the late 90s. I can have four cables here. Uh, here the VGA PS2, but also setup and remote. And yeah, I like this unit. And I cut this from a friend, so Thank you, uh, Tim. And I didn't test it yet, so ah, let's just first put in the rack and then test it out. The other thing that I found in a thrift store is HP Pro Curve switches. And it is 24 ports, uh, 10 100, two gigabit uplinks and two SFP uh, uplinks. So I have four gigabit ports and uh, 24 uh, 100 Mbit ports. And I cut two of them. So this is perfect for LAN parties and perfect for my retro part of the network. At least install one of them in the rack so I can put the Sun V100 on, on this switch just to have uh, the retro network separate from the main network and also the uh, Quantum 3D Alchemist can go on here because they are also 100 Mbit. And this is the second unit and it is exactly the same and it is in 26, 10, 24. And here the last item to go in the rack. Oh wait, no Victor, we don't gonna put a uh, cassette player in the rack. Put it back. Okay. So let's uh, close the door for now because I need to have some more room in the back. So let's see if I can push it over on the wheels a little bit more to here. So this is much better, much more room to work here. Okay, it didn't go well. I ripped off the whole uh, screw thread of this screw because the holes here in the rack ears were too small. So I used a router to make the holes now 6 millimeters instead of 5 something. So here under in my rack I have my micro tick switch for my 10 gig network and this uh, fiber optic cable goes to my other room to my workstation but it's quite short so uh, I gonna extend it with a longer cable so it can go up my rack and down into it and to do that I need a coupler and here I have a uh, fiber coupler but this unit is a bit too big because this side pieces so I made this slim down version so I can uh, put it in this uh, pipe. So let's make some room. Because here we have the fiber cable. And the piping goes only up to here. So here you can see the pipe. Also with a corner piece. So I need to make this uh, longer and go up. So let's measure how long the new pipe needs to be. 2 meters and 58 centimeters. So I cut this uh, 4 meter pipe. It barely fits in my studio. 
So let's measure it out and then I will use this pipe cutter to make it shorter. Yes, that fits. So let's route the fiber cable through the pipe. So here we have the corner piece and then we take the coupler and here I have another 5 meter fiber optic cable. I ran out of long enough pipes to go up so I need to go to the store but I will do that later. So for now I will use this shorter pipe to just route the cable. So I'm gonna use two corner pieces, one here and one here to route the fiber cable over the rack. Yes, that is nice. And this piece can be the pivot point there by the wall. Yeah, I like it. So this will be the construction to route the fiber cable into my rack. Here I made a bracket that goes here into the rails with some zip ties around the pipe with the corner pieces. Whoops, I forget to route the fiber cable first. So this is the end result. I don't have a rack mount kit for my MicroTik switch, but I made this bracket, so I have like a half uh, rack mount system. So uh, let's put it on the bracket and then install it in my server rack. So I think this is a really nice spot in the rack for the little MicroTik switch. So let's do the cabling, so first the power. So let's route the fiber cable through here. This is not a permanent route, but let's just install it because my workstation haven't had uh, internet for three hours right now. So yeah, maybe it's time to get my connection up and running again. So it's now time to route the duct cables from my two servers to the switch. And here we have the last cable and that's the link to the rest of the network. So there are two things I want to test out. That is the Apple X serve and the KVM switch on top. So let's combine that. To connect the Apple X serve I need this USB to PS2 adapter and this VGA adapter. Awesome, the HP uh, console switch is working. So we have ASX3, P166MMX, Windows 98 and Windows Vista. Sweet. Nice. The Apple x Surf and the console switch are both working. Okay, the Apple X Surf is in a reboot loop, so I gonna need to reinstall it. And in another video, I will take a look uh, at the system and open it and do the software and just get it back up and running. Under my desk is my second Quantum 3D Alt Gemini system, uh, which is broken now. But instead of putting it under my desk, I can also put it here in my server rack. I have these rack rails, so maybe I can put them in my server rack and put that chassis on top of it because I don't have the rack kit for it. So let's loosen those screws here so I can extend the rails. And I need M4 screws. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 rack units. That is good because the chassis are 4U each. 
One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. And then here the other one. <laughs> that will be really epic. And then my rack is getting a bit full. Which is also really awesome. Yeah, I like this. Noise, noise, noise. I can put the other one just in here just for for fun yeah i mean i can just rest it here on the drawer yeah let's do it why not <laughs> wow this is pretty epic let's see if we open the door here okay sweet so this looks really epic and from this you see i have the rack ears but i need to reinstall them only the front panel like this is missing on this unit but all the stickers are on there so if someone has a front panel like this, a spare, let me know. And also uh, what I like to get is the original rack rails of this system or something universal uh, which will fit. So we can maybe take a look on the sizing of the holes here. So here on the side we have holes, but they are not M4. Is this M4? Also, no. Is it M5? Mm, also no. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, we have some treading on the side, but probably some American uh, stuff. And if we take a tape measure, it measures from the bottom of the system 7.3 millimeters. And from the top of the system, it's exactly 10 centimeters. It doesn't look that it is in the middle of a real U. So that makes it maybe a little bit more difficult to find a universal kit. Or I need to just get a universal kit and make new holes in the chassis. Choices, choices. But if someone has something that can fit, please let me know. The Sunfire V210 won't go back in the server rack for now. But today on eBay I found the missing parts for the rack kit for it. And they were in the Netherlands, so they were pretty cheap. They will come probably next week and then I will put the system back in the rack. On the original rails, probably just below the Sun V100. Also I bought new patch cables today, 15 centimeters in black and red then this mesh will be uh, much nicer and then i also will do uh, much more cable management in the server rack itself and also i ordered an extra rack mount power bar now i have a loose power bar under in the rack but that will be also mounted for like the adapters and stuff like that because the rest is all on c13 uh, connectors i really enjoyed making this video and working on my server rack because it is something that is really personal what you put in it and how you set it up and yeah you can really make your own epic configuration my personal home lab is really a mix uh, with really uh, old retro hardware and new stuff and yeah that is how i like it so let me know what do you use for a server and do you have it in a rack and 
uh, what kind of rack do you have and how many servers do you have and tell me about your network configuration because I really enjoy reading stuff like that. So thanks for watching. You can support me by becoming a Patreon or you can use my Amazon affiliated links down in the description.